Do you think God needs to be back in government? Um, yes. I mean, our government was based on it. Right. You know, and God we trust is on our money. So You know, one of the <clears throat> amendments in the Constitution uh, says that, you know, there will be a separation between church and state. A lot of people are saying they want to see more church I in do. state. I do. I think so. So certain parts of the Constitution, take it or leave it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so... Um, I, I believe fully in the Constitution. Isn't it always this lie? I mean, isn't it always the story that the Republican Party is the party of small government and Christian beliefs? But this gentleman, draped in Trump gear, is a walking paradox. But where is this belief rooted? Where did this idea that these Constitution-loving Republicans came up with that America is a Christian nation? Well, this gentleman seems to believe that it came from the statement, in God we trust, that's on our money. Additionally, he said that our government was based on it. Again, the complete bumbling of history in a very loose and inaccurate way by Republicans seems to be par for the course. So you see, I also call myself a Christian nationalist. And that's not a bad word. That's actually a good thing, right? So often we hear these people refer to the founding fathers as Christian, and some of them were, but to imply that all of the men that founded this country were Christian nationalists in any sense isn't simply wrong. It's also completely ahistorical and the understanding can't be rooted in anything that we call our constitution. But also this idea of America looks nothing like a Christian nation and it was never intended to. The church complied. The church is supposed to direct the government. The government is not supposed to direct the church. That is not how our founding fathers intended it. And I'm tired of this separation of church and state junk that's not in the Constitution. It was in a stinking letter, and it means nothing like what they say it does. Let me be clear when I say this. There is absolutely no written or spoken history anywhere that supports that the founders of this country wanted a Christian nation. So many folk believe that Puritans founded this country, but they didn't. They founded Massachusetts, but not the country. There are large swaths of people in this country who would have you believe that the founders were these Bible-thumping evangelicals, when in actuality, the founders were a diverse group. Well, as diverse of a group as well-off white men can be. And that's important though. It's important to understand that not only were they diverse, but mostly they were diverse in their thinking, which means they argue about a lot of stuff. Many of the founders, especially those who were the most influential, were more theistic rationalists, really. This is true for Ben Franklin, who was the oldest at 70, George Washington, John Adams, James Wilson, and even Thomas Jefferson, who was the chief author of the Declaration of Independence. And what does it mean to be a theistic rationalist? It meant that these men believed in natural religion and traditional religion, yes, some also the human ability to be rational. And it's important to emphasize rationalism because it is the uppermost element in the idea of theistic rationalism. It is. That means these gentlemen put equal or even more grounded in human rationality than they did in religion. So where did this idea that Christianity was a part of this country's origin story? Well, that's an easy question. Republicans, Republicans trying to trick white evangelicals created this myth. It was right around the beginning of the civil rights era when Republicans figured out that whites who opposed Brown v. Board of Education didn't use their love of segregation as the reason to open up private schools once the federal government mandated integrated schools. No, they didn't. They used the religious freedom argument. And next we saw segregation academies starting to pop up around the country. Nixon took his cues and rolled this, this a resentment, this resentment straight into the White House using the strategies of Kevin Phillips, who wrote what would become the Southern strategies. And what Kevin Phillips knew was he could take white Southerners, evangelicals who hated Black people and the right that they had to vote and the fact that they were registering Democrats, and he could use that to get more white evangelicals to become Republicans. And there it began. Republicans knew from then on that they could manipulate white evangelicals to believe anything as long as they said, in God we trust. And it worked. Christian nationalists, white evangelicals, or Republicans, whichever you choose to call them, have never been united as a group of people because of their love for Jesus. That isn't their glue. 
It never has been. White people who feel they are losing America to a more diverse population is their glue. White nationalism is their glue. You can almost take out Christianity. If white Christian nationalists would ever by chance hear my voice, probably won't. So I guess you, the viewers, if you know any of them personally, then if you could tell them, I think they can learn a thing or two, a thing or two, if they just listen to history, real history. First, please break their fragile hearts and let them know that in God we trust was not a part of the origin story. And actually, the only reason it's on our money is because the 34th president, Dwight Eisenhower, made it so. 34th. That's in the 50s. The 1950s. Not 1750s. Not 1850s. 1950. Dwight Eisenhower made it so. Also, you might want to tell them there is something they can take from one of the founding fathers and it might help them on their path. Please tell them to think about what George Washington said. He said, when one side of a story is only heard and often repeated, the human mind becomes impressed with it insensibly. Tell them to turn off Fox News and wake up because woke isn't a bad state. I am Mundell Robinson with Rebel HQ. Have a good evening, but not before you think about it.